Hi, today we'll be looking at a Dell PowerEdge R630. Uh, specifically, I've been asked by uh, various groups all at the same time for servers that could be used both for home labs and for a company that wants it as a spare server in case anything should break. Um, during these times, obviously, it's good to have additional hardware because as we all know, there's some shortages out there. Things are hard to get. So if you've got a smaller budget and you'd like a discount, 50% plus potentially, uh, then this is the kind of server to get. So this being uh, 630, it's a Gen 13, so it's uh, slightly older. This one dates to about 2015, 2016, so it gives you an idea of the date. Um, however, they're still quite powerful. So let's take a quick look around. I mean, you'll, you'll notice it looks very similar. And again, these are customizable, so when you get one of these, you have the choice between getting one of these uh, bays set up or all of them. The most standard one is eight, so you'll have eight bays in the front. This particular one does away with the CD-ROM and so forth and has an additional two bays in the front. So in these bays you would put, and I actually don't have drives right now, but you would have the drives in here. And of course these, as you may be able to tell, these are two dot five or two and a half inch drives. So traditionally these would be SSDs. Now most of the time if I was building this for the lab, what I would recommend is probably something like this, which is a, a Seagate. And you'll notice that this is an Iron Wolf. Uh, there's a, I believe there's a newer model of this. The big thing here is these are specifically made for NAS, NAS. So these are enterprise level. So when you've got multiple drives, you want this as a minimum. Or, of course, you can get the Dell branded drives. The Dell branded drives will be uh, recognized by the hardware and uh, it does away with using third-party drives such as Seagate, uh, which might give you an exclamation point somewhere or some warnings that it's not a, a, an actual Dell drive in there. Some of the drives, like you use these, for example, in things like QNAPs or other NASs, uh, they've got some specialized software that will talk to the NAS that will tell you the, uh, of, you know, how much life is left on these drives. Um, you'll have to go and uh, fool around, I guess, with the Dells versus the different brands and see which ones will give you what kind of information back if you go into the RAID controller. So one of the things I'd like to point out from the front, I mean, I know we looked at it very briefly, but uh, you'll notice the power button here on the left, it's very, very small, and this is done on purpose so that you don't accidentally hit the power button when these things are running, especially if you're in a uh, large rack and you've got multiple of them, you don't want someone hitting a button and turning things off by accident. The other thing too is you'll notice in this particular configuration is the USB drive in the front, uh, I just say USB drive, the USB port in the front is not a full size, so if you have something like a mouse and so forth you want to plug in, if you have the 10 bays occupied, you'll also notice there's no VGA in front as uh, the uh, 640 would have. So let's go ahead and spin this around and let's take a quick look at the back. Now before I go much further with this, I'd like to talk a little bit about the power supplies, which is something that you can see right there in the back. So let's take one of these out. They're quite easy to take out. Now when you get one of these, uh, just so you know, you can get so six, uh, 495 watts, you can get 750 watts, you can also get 1100 watts, and as you can tell these are actually the same size, so you can interchange them, uh, put one or the other. Obviously the more, you know, if you have higher end processors, more drives, so forth, you'll need more power. The nice thing about this is they're quite interchangeable, they're hot plug. You need to have two the same, so I would not recommend putting a 495 with a 750 for example. Since these are quite customizable, you'll see how easy these are to put in. You will notice the networks. So in this particular case, this unit here has a, I believe this is a Broadcom, it's a BCM57800. And in this case, you've got two ports that are 10 gigabit and you have two ethernet, one gigabit in the back. So that's how that's split up. This unit comes with only, you'll see, two USB plugs in the back that you can put in. So if you've got a keyboard and a mouse, well, 
there that goes. You've got VGA, and this is for the iDRAC. In this case, it's the iDRAC version 8. So here's my favorite part. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the inside and be ready to see a lot of space in here. Just put this down. Now, the first thing you'll notice are the very uh, the whole space being used by both the memory and the processors. Now the processors, in this case, you have the option, since it's the older, these are the E5 version 3 or version 4. So in our case we've got E5, they're 2660s uh, version 3, and what that implies is they're 12 core, 2.6 gigahertz each. So from a VMware point of view, you're looking at 48 uh, vCPUs. So that's a lot of uh, CPUs that can be allocated to virtual machines. The other nice thing is all the slots for the memory. So if I take this off here for a minute, let's have a quick look. So the memory slots, there's a lot of them, and yes, you can actually put in memory to each one of these. So these are fillers, by the way, the pieces of plastic that fill up the hole. And uh, so there's 24 of them. And so I'm using 16 gig, these are DDR3. Put them back in. So DDR3, and they're ECC error correcting code uh, memory sticks. And so I've got 128 gigs and look at all the space I have left. So if you were to use, if you were to fill all these up with 16 gigs, you'd have 384 gigs of RAM. If I were to use 32 gigs, then we'd be moving up to uh, 768 gigs. I mean, the, I think for especially for home type of environment, um, I'm saying home, but you know, small lab at the office, uh, this is uh, more than ample. And as a backup server, what's really nice about it is you can, in case of a failure of one of the other uh, servers, assuming that you had the DR3 memory, of course, from similar servers, you can repopulate this and be up and running fairly quickly if you need additional hardware. The other thing you'll notice is there's a lot of fans. This is similar if you've seen my 640 video. So these fans are basically plug and play. I mean, they're, they come with the unit when you order them. There's high performance fans that you can also get as an additional feature. Uh, last but not least, all of this, uh, you've got the RAID controller. And that's something that you will uh, have to look at when you order one of these. Generally, try to get the higher end one. It's a seven, sorry, it's a H seven thirty, I believe, is the uh, higher end one that you can get on this particular model. And this will, of course, help you with more speed. It's really noticeable when you do recovery. Uh, people sometimes try to use whatever's the cheapest. They'll use the uh, the H three hundred series, for example, as a rate controller. And if one day you happen to have a failure with the RAID, you want to do a rebuild, you'll really wish you had paid for a better RAID controller because then it will be super slow. And of course, during an emergency, it's not when you want to sit around and have to wait hours and hours for things to rebuild. So this particular unit will be running VMware version 7. So in that case, it's ESXi 7. And again, I've, I've mentioned this before. If you're doing this in a small environment, I'll turn this around. And what I've done is I actually have a USB stick that I've shoved in here. And what that does is gives me 16 gigs to load the operating system on. That's strictly for VMware. And what this does is when you the machine boots up, it will load the VMware ESXi. In this case, it's uh, version 7, update 1. It loads into memory. And then as long as you don't close it, it doesn't really need to reread that. You can program it, of course, to send the logs uh, potentially to this or to somewhere else. That's uh, an entirely different conversation. The other thing too is if you're doing this for uh, a small lab, if you're doing this uh, for testing uh, reasons and either you don't want to use, you don't have extra drives, or if you, on the flip side, you want something that is super fast, what you can do is if you happen to have some drives lying around, See, what I've done here is I had a, a Samsung 960 Pro. This is an NVMe drive. So what I've done is I've put it on a very inexpensive adapter, put it in here. So I'm going to be getting a lot of speed 
and it's relatively inexpensive. Again, if this is a test environment, this is an environment that does not require to have a RAID, such as mirroring or a RAID 5. Uh, of course, if this drive fails, then there goes the, uh, the data. But uh, like I said, depending on the case, if you want something fast, quick, and dirty to be able to uh, spin stuff up, run them, test, it's the perfect way to go. We hope you enjoyed the tour of this Power Edge R630. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. I'm Bob Pellerin, CTO Bob. See you in the next video.